Hi everybody, welcome back. Thanks for joining me again. In this video, I'm gonna tell you about some of the products and things that have pretty much saved our life over the past couple of years when we've been doing our house renovation and extension project. So if you're crazy enough to be taking on any DIY or renovation work, you might wanna take a look at this list because there might be some things on there that will be useful to you as well. A couple of our most used power tools on this extension project have been our impact driver and our cordless drill. In an ideal world, it's good to have both of these. Obviously, if budget won't allow, you might have to choose one or the other, depending what most of the work that you're doing is. We've used our impact driver for jobs like the one behind us, where we've had to fix the uh, plasterboard to the wall. But once we get round to actually doing the fixings in the plasterboard and so on, a cordless drill is actually much more useful. If you want to understand more about the difference between the two, I will post a link below to a video that my dad did on his channel that goes into a bit more technical detail. A couple of little bit sets will really set you up well. Uh, these can be used with the impact driver or with your cordless drill, and the more you've got, the better, because otherwise you can spend all your time looking for these. One top tip, though, is that if there's more than one person working on your project, lock them away somewhere. One definite must have is a big bad box of screws because I cannot tell you how much time you can lose searching for the right screw. It screwed us over a number of times and we just kept buying more and more screws. So in the end, we bought a nice big box and you want to have as many varieties as possible. And it's really nice to have a box. You don't have to go over the top spending money, but something that closes nicely that you can store and stack away and big enough that you'll find it. So when you're going, where's that screw I need? it'll come to our hand fairly easily. Okay, so this is also quite a good fun tool to have. Incidentally, when I'm talking about power tools, obviously only use them if you feel confident to do so because we are on dangerous territory now. Um, but this has saved us a lot of time over our project. Uh, it's a mini angle grinder. It's useful for cutting tougher stuff that otherwise, if you were cutting it by hand, it would take you some time to do. So we've used this in our bathroom upstairs when we were cutting the tiles. We used it to cut through the coach bolts when we were doing the uh, decking outside. Um, anything that's a little bit more difficult to get through definitely comes in handy. Don't forget your PPE, of course, your goggles and anything else that you might need when you're using it. So this one is the multi-tool. Um, as its name suggests, it's useful for lots of different jobs. In particular on this project, we've used it for instance, to cut out the socket boxes on the wall behind me. We also used it for cutting out wedges on the doors anything that's a bit more neat and a bit more specific where you need to be a bit more accurate about what you're doing, multi-tools come in really handy. There's also lots of different fittings that you can attach to it. This is a very noisy, but also quite a handy little tool. This is called a skill saw, and we've used this where we've needed to get um, straight cuts of wood. So where we've been building the stud walls, the frames for the doors and so on, provided you've got a track or you've got a square that you can use it with, you can fairly quickly and easily get nice straight cuts with something like this. One thing you definitely need with all those power tools is a recharger, battery charger, um, preferably perhaps more than one or more than one battery, so that you've always got something charged and a battery ready to go because because that'll slow you down if you run out of juice. Expanding foam comes in various different makes, but also pretty handy. This is used for filling in gaps. So if you've got gaps around a door, under a window, in lots of different places, this is really handy. Be a little bit careful when you use it. Don't get it on yourself. Um, you've probably all seen the funny memes of people in A&E covered in expanding foam. Actually, probably not very funny, but anyway. Um, and also be careful not to use too much because it can then actually move what you're filling if it expands too much. So just be a little bit cautious with it, but it's a pretty handy thing to have. So safety shoes are gonna keep you out of trouble in terms of if you stand on a nail or something sharp or you drop something heavy on your feet, it's gonna keep you protected. These have become my personal favorite. These are the solid gear ones from Snickers. Um, out of pure laziness, to be honest, because they've got this nice boa lace system on them. So you can pretty much slip them on and then do them up really easily, um, which is a lot easier than faffing around with laces if you don't need to. Something that I thought was overkill when we first got it, but I have since grown to love and we definitely couldn't have been without it in this project because it's been ongoing for some time, is our uh, super duper industrial vacuum cleaner. Don't go using your home vacuum cleaner um, to deal with construction dust because first of all, it's not going to do the job properly and you will mess up your home vacuum cleaner pretty quickly, especially if it's got one of those expensive HEPA filters in it. It will just uh, 
completely mess it up and break the motor and so on. Um, the industrial ones are designed to cope with this kind of mess. They actually come with an L, M or H rating. You want a minimum of an M, which is medium, basically it's low, medium and high rating if you're dealing with construction dust, because uh, not only is it gonna filter that nicely, but also it has an alarm on it, which means that if it is blocked and it's therefore spitting it back out into the atmosphere, you know about it. So you know that you're not um, exacerbating the problem. In general, as a kind of housekeeping point when you're doing building projects, it's much better to use a vacuum cleaner than a broom because if you're using a broom or a brush, you're just putting all that dust back into the atmosphere. So it's by far the best way to clean up. It might seem like an extravagance. It might be something that you buy um, at the beginning of your project and then sell at the end. But I would definitely say we could not have lived without this. Another one on the housekeeping front is a roll of this stuff. Now it comes, uh, a couple of different people do it. This one is roll and stroll, I believe. But basically this is to protect any of your surfaces underfoot. So carpet, flooring, anything that you don't want ruined during the building or renovation uh, process. We've had this on our stairs for about 18 months and the carpet underneath it is still in perfect condition. It hasn't ripped, hasn't scraped and it's had a lot of people and a lot of work going up and down it. So uh, it really is worth um, investing in some of this. An absolute must have, especially if you're thinking about using any of those power tools, is a nice selection of PPE, which basically stands for personal protective equipment. Um, in particular, we probably use the most are dust masks. Now, one word about dust masks is that when you go into the builders merchants or the DIY shops, you'll probably see those boxes of nuisance dust masks. They're pretty much useless. They don't really protect you against any kind of construction dust or building dust. You actually need something with a rating of uh, a P3 rating or above. Um, something that's going to cost you a little bit more money unfortunately because you can pick up a box of them for a couple of quid things like this come in at about five pounds each this is an alpha solway one uh, we had a couple of boxes of these at the beginning of the build and they were brilliant they fitted so well because if they don't fit you to the face they're not actually protecting you and you'll find a lot of the cheaper ones it's harder to get a good fit with so i would say probably look to look at spending around five pounds per mask um, because you've only got one pair of lungs other PP to consider, obviously gloves. We've had loads of pairs of these throughout our build, always really handy. Um, also hearing protection if you are using any particularly loud tools or you're around tools being used in general, um, that can be helpful as well. And eye protection goggles as well. A nice big uh, tub of something like Big Wipes, there's actually a few different brands out there, is also pretty handy to have around. Uh, good for cleaning your tools down, good for just generally wiping up. And also, as you can see in the little picture on here, um, you can get things like mastic off your hands with it. So when you get nasty things like that on, you wanna get them off as quickly as possible and uh, you need something fairly tough to do the job. These are actually pretty magical when you compare them to things like baby wipes that you might be more used to dealing with. Um, these are serious wipes. A decent tape measure and spirit level will also take you a long way. This one is obviously very well used and well loved. It's a Stabila one, but it's been very reliable and uh, so it's stuck around for some time. On the tape measure front, find yourself something fairly decent. The cheaper ones tend to cut your hands and just be a little bit annoying and get clogged up quite easily. But another tip with these is uh, hide them away with your drill bits. Definitely need one of these, if not two, because this is another thing we're constantly looking for or looking to use. Um, nice, long, decent, easy to use extension lead. This has also been a really useful tool for us in this build and it's a laser level. This is a really nice one from Leica actually. Um, we use this for our bathroom when we were working out all the levels and the tiles and so on. But a tip from experience with these is uh, when you transport them, you need to lock them because that protects the pendulum inside. But then make sure, doubly make sure that when you go to use it again, you've unlocked it. Otherwise you might not actually get the perfect level that you're looking for. Um, and as a safety point, be very, very careful not to uh, shine these in your eyes because they can actually cause you permanent damage if you do, but well worth investing in. So there we go, that's our list. I hope that you found that useful. And if you've got your own useful products that you uh, swear by, please feel free to add them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Please do come back soon. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button, as the kids would say. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>